Before we get into the video, I quickly just want to show you his build. Wolfie values the flame dash a lot, and as you can see, that's something that he maxes out first. And early game, he likes to go infuser into enduring spirit, and then he grabs fire rate items such as extra stamina and rapid rounds, because fire rate has more value on Infernus in this patch, because it takes more bullets for us to apply our burn. For the 1250 items, he always goes soul shredder bullets and kinetic dash, and then he flexes around depending on what the enemy team is doing. He likes to go either reactive barrier or enchanter's barrier, and then he goes spirit lifesteal into healing booster, and then goes for duration extender to just extend the burn extend the flame dash the infuser everything that can be extendable and then the first 3k item that we get is toxic bullets because it's just core on infernos and the rest of the 3k items is situational and we always try to counter build whatever the enemy team is doing our first 6.2k item is ricochet and then we can look to do a lot of different things ricochet into spiritual overflow is super nice ricochet into inhibitor is very nice too if you do want to go leech you want to sell your spirit lifesteal and if you feel like you're getting shut down a lot unstoppable can be super super good and by the way i do private coaching in deadlock now so make sure to head on over to my discord for more information and let's get right into the video. Alright, so today I'm covering Wolfie, who's a top player in Europe, plays a lot of Infernus, and he's currently sitting in Eterna 6. The main reason why I picked him is because he has a bit of a unique playstyle in lane. He likes to max out his flame dash and he plays heavily around it. So his goal is essentially to burn his opponent and then go for the flame dash and he creates a mini arena around himself to just battle it out. The flame dash does a lot of damage when you put two points into it. It does 45 extra DPS, so it sits over 80 per tick. He's laning into a pocket, and one thing to keep in mind on pocket is that all of our abilities that deal spirit, especially our burn, is going to do about 15% extra damage early on, because pocket starts with minus 15% spirit resist. And that's why building shields is very good on pocket, because shields don't account for your spirit resistance. So when pocket starts building shields, we need to chunk the shield down before we start to apply damage to his HP. Just focuses on the wave here. I mean, there's not too much to do. We can't really kill Pocket this early on. And now we're going to get our Flame Dash. And he's going to put one point into it as well. Which will decrease Pocket's fire rate by 30% if he stands in our Flame Dash. It's a debuff that lasts for 6 seconds. I think he's going to go Infuser first item. Yes, Wolfie values a lot of Spirit Lifesteal. He likes to basically just Flame Dash through his opponent in a fight. And also he tries to hit as many troopers as possible. Then he pops his Infuser and just gets a lot of Lifesteal out of it. Yeah, doesn't care too much about the pocket here. We're just mainly focusing on the wave and farming up so we can get our points and our abilities and also so we can get some lifesteal items going. However, if we do get a burn on pocket, we definitely want to apply our flame dash as soon as possible and try to do something big. So here, pocket used his cooldowns. He doesn't really have anything. So now we can just pop our infuser, flame dash him and just get our burn going. I think this is just going to be an easy kill for Wolfie here. Pocket still burning. Might just die to it, yeah. We do so much damage with our spirit abilities here because, yeah, because of the minus 15% spirit resistance. I don't think any other character dies there and he gets the healing right instantly. And the reason why he gets the healing right is just so he can be full HP whenever Pocket comes back to lane. Whenever you get an early kill like this, you can just freeze the wave and last it. We want to make him lose as many troopers as possible. We don't need to shove the wave at all. And then when Pocket comes back, we can shove the wave or we can do something during the downtime. I mean, he's not, we're not, as long as we're not losing any minions, right? And why does Pocket go in here? You, you do not want to be here against an Infernus when he has the Flame Dash upgraded like that. He goes in there, he pops the suitcase, but he's going to give his life for it. That's just so stupid. And keep in mind, this is a high Eternus lobby, so I'm not sure what's going on. I'm very confused by the Pocket. And look at Wolfie's gold lead right now. He's at 2.5k while Pocket is sitting at 800. And now we can just keep shoving the wave as the as the as his troopers or the troopers that he wants to kill are just going to die to the tower. We can also use this time to go for boxes or shop. Looks like Paradox is here as well now. I mean, Pocket is losing the lane very, very badly. So I'm assuming that's why Paradox is here to help. You can just grab some boxes on the way back here or just spend some money. Goes for Soul Shredder Bullets and Rapid Rounds right away. I think if, he, if the lane was equal, he would go for Enduring Spirit. But since he is so far ahead, he can just grab Soul Shredder Bullets and a bit of extra fire rate. So now, Pocket, he cannot 1v1 us. We're just so far ahead of him. And now our goal is just to end the lane as soon as possible. We want to kill Pocket, we want to try to get rid of him from the lane. And then we want to try to focus down the tower. But just look at the damage that we have right now. It's just insane. Does he have two points? Yeah, he does have two points in his Flame Dash now. So yeah, the key to this build and this playstyle is just to... Burn the opponent and then flame dash over them and then just like, go for the fight. One thing that's important with Pocket as well is just to keep track of his cooldowns. In general, they are very, very quick. So if he uses his cloak, if he uses his satchel, then you have a massive window to just trade on him. 
I feel like a lot of pocket players just throw their cloak, their teleport ability out in fights and they, they're not really that mindful of where it's going. In general, I would use it as an escape tool or as a tool to catch up to my opponent. And if we do want to throw it, then you should throw it in a direction where you can actually escape, I think, if you are in a... If you're all in in a fight, essentially. And I know that Wolfies likes to build very defensively. There's a lot of good items that you can get this early on. A reactive barrier is very nice. You can get a debuff reducer. I think a debuff remover this game is very nice because especially when Pocket gets two points in his ult, it removes our healing by 60%. So just being able to remove it there. And there's the flame dash into ult. I think Warden is just going to die here, to be completely honest with you. He's still standing in the flame dash. Another change with Warden in this patch, by the way, is if he gets stunned while channeling his ult, the ult fully goes on cooldown. And the cooldown is 2 minutes, I believe. Yeah, it's 138 seconds early on in the game until you max it out. So, it's very, very harsh for Warden. You need to be very mindful of when you're ulting. Because, again, if it does get interrupted, you've just wasted 2 minutes without an ult. Goes for Duration Extender there and extra stamina so you can catch somebody faster. And also gives them a bit of extra fire rate. It extends our burn, our flame dash, our infuser and all that good stuff. Curious if he's going to dive the Warden here. Basically forcing the Warden to not go to his tower. Look at that damage. Mirage TP is over. Yeah, I think a debuff remover this game is quite good. Because again, you can remove Pocket Ult. You can remove Warden Cage. Is he gonna die? I am not sure what this Pocket is doing. Anyways, you can remove Pocket Ult. You can remove Warden Cage. Uh, you can remove Paradox Silence if you go through her wall or if you get swapped. You can remove Vindicta Crow. You can remove Vindicta Stake. So... So a lot of value to be had from a debuff remover. Goes for a kinetic dash there. It's super nice to just get that extra fire rate whenever you dash jump. And also having a dash jump available that only costs you one stamina instead of two is just super nice whenever chasing or escaping from somebody. And during downtime here, we don't necessarily need to go back to our lane because Lash and Mirage are there right now. So we can just grab the jungle and then start to move back to our lane. Grabs even more jungle on the way uh, on the way back. I mean, the wave is still not pushing back to our tower, so we do have a bit of downtime here. We are farming very, very fast. As long as we burn all of the jungle creeps and then use our flame dash, now that it is upgraded, we're just doing so much damage to it. So just very efficient farming, and we didn't lose a single trooper there, so it gets the full wave under tower. And I think we want to try to look to, to get the tower down. And whenever the first tower falls in the game, guys, remember that that is normally the queue for when the mid-game starts. Either for the enemy team or on your team, people will start roaming because there isn't a tower there. So need to be mindful of that. And I think if we, do, if we do get a tower down here, the map just opens up. Teleporters open up at 8 minutes. And in theory, I mean, we can teleport from the right side to the left side and start press pressuring this lane to grab the tower. There's just so many different things that you want to do, but the main focus is always the wave. If the wave is pushed up, it gives us a buffer to do whatever we want. If you want to gank another lane, if you want a jungle... You want to grab a buff for 10 minutes that's completely up to you uh but the key is always to just be back for the wave crashing so we can soak that xp if um you know if a trooper dies that's gold lost forever jungle camps and all that stuff is always going to be there until somebody makes an active choice to grab it and during some downtime here grabbing some boxes just getting a bit of extra soul some extra bonuses from the golden statues and then just focusing the wave here's the paradoxes here we are just so far ahead of everyone. We're sitting at 8k gold right now. That's 3k up on the parents. He's gonna try to go for a kill here. I mean, I think we can even dive at this point with our with, considering how strong our flame dash is. Also, he has reactive barrier. So if he if he does get swapped here, it just pops bullet and spirit shield for us. So the way that reactive barrier works is that whenever you get immobilized, you get bullet shield and spirit shield. So it's just super nice whenever taking a fight. A lot of people underestimate you. And I think. Are we gonna go for this ward or we're just gonna escape? I think we just escape. I think we're looking to just grab the tower here. Or we can just go back to buy as well. I mean, he's sitting on 2k. Here's what item he's gonna get next. Maybe Spirit Lifesteal. I know if the game was more even, he would go Enduring Spirit earlier with Infuser. But since we are so far ahead and he has so much money, you can just grab Spirit Lifesteal on top of that. Healing Booster is also a super nice item on Infernus because it gives us extra healing. But also reduces the effectiveness of any, any anti-heal items such as uh, Heal Bane, Toxic Bullets, Decay and all that stuff. Yeah, during downtime here, just going for some more boxes and always making sure to go back to the wave. And I think, I think it's time to maybe try to get the tower down, just open up the map, map a bit more on our side. Goes for Decay there, Decay is super valuable into a Warden ult, for example, because Warden ult has AoE healing. Into Abrams, very, very nice. Paradox has ability lifesteal on her ult whenever she swaps someone. There's a lot of lifesteal in this game in general, so I think a Decay is not a bad choice. And whenever you are this far ahead in your games and you do have a lot of damage, you can just build defensively, you can just build to stay alive, because what's the point of getting a bigger item and even more damage if you're just going to die? The longer we stay alive on Infernus, the better, and in general, Infernus thrives in extended fights. If a fight is taking longer than needed, he's just getting stronger, he's just burning people down, he's just such a monster. If it's a quick fight, then Infernus doesn't get a lot of value. 
And we never really need to force any fights. On Infernus, we definitely want to prioritize farming, but the key is always the waves. The waves need to be in a good state. And then during downtime, we can do a lot of different things. I think he wanted to look for the buff there, but he heard Vindicta and Paradox, so we can't really do that. Now, with our Flame Dash upgraded, we can get Jungle Camp super fast, especially this basement here. And I think he opts to max out the Flame Dash. A lot of Infernus players like to max out the 3, but he maxes the 2. And I think it is, first of all, for more damage, but also to lower the cooldown. Because you can get between lanes faster, you can do more Jungle Camps more efficiently, and I think it just scales better. But it's a playstyle preference. I personally prefer to max out the three because my playstyle is heav heavily around this burn and more uh, more shooting. Whereas Wolfies is more aggressive, it's more in your face and more ar around the flame dash in general. Also, reactive barrier gives you two health regen and it also gives you more ammo in your mag. So just so much value in a 1250 item. Goes for toxic bullets there as its core and it's been there's been a change in the recent patch with toxic bullets. So before it used to do 5% of the current HP that somebody has. Now it does 2.5% of their max HP. So it's way nicer to finish people off and it scales better into the late game because you're doing more damage when people have more HP. Goes for the decay on the Abrams there so he can't heal up. He's standing in our flame dash and I think that's just an easy kill. Nice parry as well. One tip to parry someone, whenever somebody's heavy punching, it does a very special sound, so just keep that in mind and keep reminding yourself to parry whenever you hear that sound cue. Looks like our team is doing big things on the left side of the map, which means that we can just split push and keep pushing this wave here. Again, we don't necessarily need to force anything, and as long as we're prioritizing waves and playing it smart, we will get fights naturally. Just as the Abrams right there. I think Wolfies just wanted to go to the wave to fix it under the walker. Abrams was there, he knows we're stronger. We have Decay as well, he can't 1v1 us, so it's just a natural kill. We don't necessarily need to force anything. And now look at this, the enemy team are going for the urn. A lot of players would just head on over there directly, but we can split push and just use the teleporter to get to the other side. Important teleporters on the map are the ones that go from edge to edge, but also the ones under walker can, can be super useful in your game. So those are the main teleporters that I would be using, to, when, especially when split pushing or playing a hard carry character like this that's farming a lot. And when you have toxic bullets or when you have your burn maxed out, you can take the tier 3 camps very, very quickly. Infernus is just so efficient at jungling, it's actually insane and you can get so big in your games. Most of the gold is sitting on Wolfie right now and there's only a 4k difference between them. I think you're just gonna go for the ward in here, I mean it should be a very very easy kill. Flame dash and our burn are fully upgraded and I don't think the warden can do much here. We have so much anti-healing too if he decides to use his ultimate against us. It's on cooldown so he can't even do that. And I, I don't think there's any value in him even trying because yeah we just have so much anti-healing it wouldn't help him in any way. Warden was just caught off guard. We get debuff remo uh, reducer there, and I think debuff remover is just, yeah, like I said, super much value in this game. I wouldn't be surprised to see him upgrading that. Also grabs Mystic Vulnerability, and I think it's such a crazy item on Infernus too, because if you do apply your burn or any spirit ability, it, it gives them minus 12% spirit resist. So it's a flat 12% increase on your damage. And now we're just shoving the wave and the one advice that i have for split pushing is if you do grab a tower or a walker while split pushing just leave right away after grabbing it because when you are there shooting the objective there is going to be a call out on the enemy team or somebody is going to notice and they will send somebody there if you overstay you will get caught out i mean you can try to take a fight if you want to limit us but in general just try to leave asap well it looks like the entire team is on our side here i'm curious what wolfie is gonna do next Goes for the Vindicta here, pops the Decay. I think it's a bit scary because there's so many people on this side of the map, but I think it's going to kill the Vindicta. But I do think that we're gonna end up dying here. Ooh. If the ult popped a tiny bit sooner, it would have cancelled the Warden ult. And I'm curious what the fight would have looked like then. Nice try. Mirage TP is in, and we do die for it. But we did, we did end up getting Vindicta. And our Yamato ended up getting a kill on Abrams in mid. And also our team managed to get a walker, so us forcing three people on us there, like, especially when you're very strong, people are gonna, there's gonna be more heroes after you, people are gonna send more people after you, which indirectly allows our team to do things on the map. So there, I mean, Yamato got a kill in mid, we got a walker in mid as well, uh, Wolfie's di Wolfie died, but he got the kill on Vindicta, so all good, I would say. We're about to spawn, so let's see where he's heading, the buffs are up. 
Our team is grabbing it on the right side there. Gets the healing booster, has spirit armor as well. I think there's a lot of spirit damage on the enemy team. Go straight for the urn to not allow the paradox to go for it. We get swap, but that pops our reactive barrier. Pops a decay on paradox, and I think paradox just dies here. I mean, what is she gonna do? She's just running in her flame dash. Do we go for the urn here? Yeah, we do. So even if you are playing the hard carry character and you think that it's a good opportunity to grab the urn, you can do it. I think Wolfie just drops it there. Yeah, we don't need to do the urn here necessarily, but it can be nice in some of your games, especially if you feel like you need to force something to just grab the urn and see how the enemy team react. I think it's using the TP here to just teleport to the wave on the other side. There's a big wave there, so a lot of gold for him to grab. Flame dashes to it to just get there faster. I think we're gonna look to shove one more wave here. And in general, whenever pushing waves, you want to push at least two waves to establish an automatic push. It's just in case we want to leave the wave, we just want to make sure that it's always going forward. And in the end, somebody will have to come from the enemy team to that wave, which gives us a lot of information of their location, but also gives our team information of where somebody is. There's he's gonna look for the walker here or for something else. I think he's probably farming for ricochet right now. As that's the, normally the first item that we go on Infernus. I really like it, especially with the change to Toxic Bullets. And it does give us a bit of extra fire rate, so we can sell Rapid Rounds for it. I think it's just gonna look to join this fight. I mean, we are super strong right now, and we can limit us a bit. Pops the Decay on Pocket, so he can't heal up. And Abrams and Pocket just die there. Our Yamato falls to the Vindicta Snipe. Looks like they want to deliver the urn on the enemy team. But since we have two kills, we can just go for the mid boss. Infernus is really good at the mid boss with his ult, especially later on if you have unstoppable. You can always ult on a good timing, and even if you do get stunned, your ult still goes off. So it doesn't AoE stun on the Regius. So it's kind of like a 7 stun, really. You can do a lot of plays around the mid boss. You have a lot of potential to steal it as well. And another cool thing is, if you do go for an ult play, I suggest you to flame dash around in a circle here, and that creates a flaming arena if the enemy team want to steal it. If they do end up stealing it, they're standing in your flame dash, they're taking a lot of damage, and you can end up getting a lot of kills, which indirectly gives you a lot of gold. Yes, it sucks if they steal it, right? But you do get a lot of gold, and it's about just stalling it out. And now we got the mid boss buff, we have our ricochet, so now we are hyper strong on Infernus. I would say we're very far ahead of everyone. You can see at the top there, there's only a 7k gold difference, but a lot of gold is sitting on Wolfie right now. Just grabs whatever jungle camps he needs. I don't think he needs to join any sort of fight right now. Also, he has a very big bag on him, so that also kind of decides if you can fight or not. I mean, running around with a bag that is 1,000 souls, if you do die, that's a 1k donation to the enemy team. That's something that we definitely do not want to give them. But in some cases, you do have to join fights, even if your bag is big. That's a judgment call that you need to make. But it kind of, you can follow it as a guideline. It kind of dictates what we should be doing, what we shouldn't. I think we get stunned by Abrams here. Yeah, we do have our flame dash still. We are afflicted by pockets, so I do think we want to try to get our debuff remover quite soon. Abrams ends up falling. Way to go. And yeah, we're just taking away. I mean, pocket will always have value as long as you don't have debuff remover. I think we're going to go back to the fight here because our team is winning. Just kill the pocket here. We have so much life stealing now. We know the pocket doesn't have affliction, so might as well just go for it. Gonna get the walker on top of this too. Nice. Goes for the burn on Paradox. Burns to Indicta too. And just look how much burn damage we're doing right now. It's insane. Also healing a lot. I do think he should go for debuff remover here. I think that's what he's going to do. But he doesn't need to go to the shop right away. He can just grab some jungle camps on the way. I mean, there's not super much for us to do right now. There's four dead on the enemy team. And I believe that our team can just grab double shrine. They can probably do the patron as well. We can check what you can check what's going on. Yeah, they're going for the shrines. Wolfie is just farming. He doesn't need to be here at all. Curious if we're gonna drop the patron too. Are we doing it? Yeah, Mirage is just safely dropping the patron, so that's all good. Meanwhile, Wolfie is just farming, and um, he's probably gonna go for a debuff remover. Just grabbing all the jungle while we're waiting. They're just downtime. I don't think they can end the game here necessarily. Goes for the jungle camp over here, and I believe that he's gonna shop right away. Another thing is, we generally want to try to shop in the secret shop, because it's closer to everything. But since Wolfie has his zipline speed boost, he can just shop over here. Gets debuff remover and ethereal shift. I think ethereal shift is super nice into raid, because it just cancels her ult. If there wasn't uh, a lash on the enemy team, then ethereal shift would be super nice too. 
in general, it's just really nice to get you out of danger because if we get a big burn off with our ricochet and we flame dash through the enemies and then we throw shift, we still get spirit life steal. We're still getting healed up, so it can be a very nice tool as well. And also, when you come out of spirit, uh, uh, when you come out of a tier shift, you get a 40% spirit resist and a lot of movement speed. So just a lot of value on that item. And like I said earlier, whenever you are this strong and you have your major power spikes, we don't need more damage. Like, what's the point of spending another 6k at like a spiritual overflow or a crippling headshot or something like that for you to just die in a fight? Like, there, there's just no value to be had there. Whereas if you just stay alive on Infernus, you're just providing infinite value to your team, especially when you're this strong. And one thing that helps me decide what defensive items I want to do, I just ask myself, what is scary on the enemy team? What am I looking for? So for me, it's honest, it's the Wraith ult right now, it's the Paradox Swap, and also the Pocket Affliction, because it reduces my healing. And look, our team is going to deliver the urn, and we'll be just pushing the wave and then teleporting over, just like I said before. We don't necessarily need to join our team instantly, as long as we're mindful of the play and we're ready to TP whenever, uh, whenever we feel like we need to be there. Pop our ult there. We have debuff remover. We have ethereal shift if we need to use it to buy time. Look at that. We did get decayed, so we're not healing anything in this fight necessarily. But we do have a debuff remover. He tries to pop it there, but I think it was popped a little bit too late. Our team do end up winning the fight though, so we trade two for four. And I think that our team will probably look to end the game here, to be completely honest with you. The patron is just dropped, and I think that's going to be it. Yep, overall a pretty clean game. I mean, Wolfie definitely destroyed his lane. Remember, this is a high Eternus lobby, so kind of crazy to see him do that. And then he just converted that lead into playing the map properly, just farming and getting big and engaging in the fights that actually decide the outcome of the game. And here's the post game screen for this one. I would love to hear your thoughts about my video, so make sure to comment down below, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, take care. Bye-bye.